Great. Um, so my name is Will Engel, and I'm a strategist for open education initiatives with UBC's Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology, or CTLT. And I'm joined today by many amazing colleagues who help support open scholarship at UBC and who developed and organized this program. And we're just going to take a moment to introduce ourselves. So I'll ask Christina to go ahead and, and do a brief introduction. Great. Thanks, Will. Um, I'm Christina Hendricks. I uh, teach in the philosophy department at UBC Vancouver, and I'm also the academic director of the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology. And I helped to um, uh, work on this program uh, last year and to put it together, and I'm excited to see it happening again. Thanks. Should I pass it on to somebody else? Yeah, we're just going to do alphabetical. Uh, so Aaron, do you want to well, hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Erin Fields, and I am with UBC Library, the Vancouver campus. I am the Open Education and Scholarly Communications Librarian, uh, and I'm very happy to be, be doing this once again and seeing so many folks here. So I'll pass it on to Lucas. Thanks for the pass. I don't think the alphabetical order was going to work for my morning brain. Um, my name is Lucas Wright. I'm a educational consultant at the CTLT. Um, and I've had an interest and open is an area that I've worked in for a while now, including a secondment at BC campus a couple of years back. And I had the opportunity to work on this program for a couple of years and uh, facilitate it last year. I think it's Rie now. Yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Rie and I'm one of the facilitators as well. Uh, I'm an educational resource developer from Center for Teaching, Learning Technology, and I'm really excited to be part of this program again. So I'm just going to pass it on to Steph. Thanks, Rhea. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie Savage. I am a librarian at UBC Library, and I specialize in copyright and scholarly communications, so publishing open access, and I helped create the open access unit for this course, and I will be helping along with Erin to manage the discussions um, for the open access unit, and it's really nice to meet you all. Thank you. I'm just going to take a minute to get back into the, the, the slides. Um, before we get started, uh, we would like to acknowledge that UBC, which is hosting this program, is located on the tra traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam people. As we're working virtually today, I'd like to acknowledge that here in the lower mainland, uh, the lower BC mainland, we're often on the unceded territories of many different Coast Salish people. And outside of this area, we may also be on the traditional lands of other um, and many different Indigenous peoples. If you haven't explored it already, um, I... I do recommend the Native Land Resource, which can help you discover the Indigenous territories on which you reside. And when I acknowledge uh, being on the territory of the Musqueam people, it's rooted in the understanding that I, as a resident of Vancouver and a member of UBC, um, I'm privileged to be living and working on territory that is not my own. Furthermore, as Pose's focus on open scholarship and as somebody who specifically works in open education, uh, the topic of open scholarship can often be in tension uh, with um, or is often grounded in Western notions of copyright law and ownership, and that this can these ideas can be in tension with indigenous and traditional ways of knowing. Um, we're not going to be exploring these tensions specifically in the kickoff session today, but we will touch it on it throughout POSE. And we're excited that Kayla Larson, the Indigenous Programs and Services Librarian at the Weewa Library at UBC, will be hosting a POSE open session on the six R's of Indigenous OER, reimagining open educational resources to honor Indigenous knowledge and sovereignty. And this session will take place during the Open Education Unit uh, on March 10th. Uh, so to help us get started, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Susan Parker, the University of Libra University Librarian of UBC. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Will, and it's great to see everybody here. Um, as Will noted, I'm Susan Parker. I'm the University Librarian at UBC, and I'm joining today from the Point Break campus on the traditional unceded and um, the territory of the Musqueam people. Very important points raised there about um, indigenous uh, information sovereignty um, pose, which is an awesome program, um, is definitely intended for those who have an interest in fostering and sharing research and practices related to open research, open access, open data, and open education and scholarship. Um, by completing this program, you will have tools and strategies to become proficient in supporting and advocating for open practices. 
Um, I wanted to also acknowledge that this program is a unique collaboration between the library, CTLT, and this uh, UBC Open Working Group. Um, these practices in open scholarship are intersecting, but they also underpin knowledge sharing and creation. And the concept of open supports free access to research outputs and empowers communities and users through engagement and education. And this helps to increase the credibility and reproducibility of research. By breaking apart the barriers that have locked up scholarship and educational resources behind paywalls and other barriers, open as a starting point transcends traditional practices and welcomes collaboration, participation, and dissemination of information. As you know, libraries are strong advocates of open resources and we support our users by helping to identify open scholarship. We also offer support by making spaces where people can learn how to create and share open scholarship. Libraries and librarians are strong advocates for the creation and preservation of open scholarship of all kinds. And we hope to create more advocates and allies through programs like POSE. That's why the POSE program is such a great fit for the library sponsorship and the colleagues you will meet through this program are knowledgeable and supportive guides and instructors. So welcome to POSE, welcome to your first day, and I hope you enjoy this learning experience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna get back into the slides just briefly. Uh, so as uh, uh, Dr. Parker mentioned, uh, POSE is organized very collaboratively and we do um, have support coming from the UBC CTLT, the UBC Library, both on the Vancouver and Okanagan campuses, as well as the UBC Library Research Commons and the Center for Scholarly Communications and the Open UBC Working Group. So today, uh, at today's sessions, we're going to highlight the program structures and do a course overview. Um, and then we'll briefly explore what is open scholarship and look at some of the areas on which we'll be focusing, mainly open access, open research, and open education. And, at, and today we also hope to provide an opportun opportunity for you to meet your fellow participants a bit. And speaking of meeting the cohort, I'm gonna turn it over to Rie to, to help facilitate that. Okay, thank you. So we would like to get started with a couple of activities to get to know more about each other in this room. So uh, in this activity, we will use a Padlet map to see where we are all located. So let me post the link on the Zoom chat right here. Okay, so switching to the uh, Padlet screen, uh, in the map here, uh, put your approximate location or the institution or the place that you are located at using that uh, pop, uh, pink icon right here. And the contribution will be anonymous, but please don't put exact uh, address. Approximate location like UBC or Vancouver or Toronto will be Great, so I'll give one minute for this FT. And I see people are starting to put the uh, location, approximate location in the map. And I see, whoa, it's all over the place. It's coming, many are coming from Vancouver, Calgary, Winnipeg, Toronto, Ottawa. Well, so like many people are taking uh, this uh, post course. Okay, so just send this activity for now, but we can see that it's coming from, everyone is coming from everywhere around in the Canada. We can see a lot of people coming from Vancouver, uh, like also like Calgary or like Winnipeg and Toronto and Ottawa, like and everyone's coming from everywhere in Canada and that's really great to see. So next, now we'll move on to the next uh, poll activity to see everyone's at and what are everyone's interest with it. So I'm just going to uh, launch the poll right now. Okay, now I see almost everyone have answered the poll, so I'm just going to uh, end the poll now. And looking at the result, uh, we have a variety of people coming from the uh, institution role. Like we have people coming from the library faculty and like uh, many are coming from the faculty and a lot of staff are taking. And I also see uh, undergraduate students and graduate students are taking the course. And also like people coming from a uh, different role as well. And also for the second question where like what are the open scholarship what of the open scholarship are you most interested in? I think many are interested in open education, but what I find very uh, interesting is like all of the open. So like everyone is interested in like open education, research, access, data. And like there are also some people who are exploring, uh, exploring like different aspects of open scholarship. Anyone, thanks for taking the poll. I'm just going to pass it on to Lucas. 
Oh, thanks, R- thanks, Rie. Um, it's exciting to see such a uh, variety of different people taking this course. Um, so POSE is a fairly complex course, meaning there's a fair number of moving parts. So what I'm going to do now is just spend a few minutes with you, guiding you through the online space. Um, so walking you through both the WordPress platform, as well as the Canvas platform for POSE. I will mention that there's also a walkthrough video we've included in POSE, so you can refer to that as well. So just let me pop open the POSE course now. And one of the first things that you probably started on in POSE is the POSE WordPress course. And we've used the WordPress space to house all of the POSE contents and many of the interactions. So just to kind of orient you to this a little bit. First of all, you probably notice now that on the homepage, this is where you can find all of the general information about POSE. So one moment, if you scroll down here, you'll see that we put accordions where you can find about a program format, et cetera. So if you're ever stuck about dates, format, et cetera, return to this page. On the top bar, you'll see there's a getting started unit. This is the open scholarship unit. And this will be the first unit that you go through. It's just kind of an introduction. That's where you'll find the walkthrough video through POSE. Each of the other units, open access, open research, will be opening each month. Open access unit is open now. And for, the, for each of the modules, you'll see that there are multiple units within it. So three units per module. You can move through them by clicking on the unit and clicking on the next page. And what you'll find in these units is you'll find content. You'll find that we've developed scenarios. We've also embedded some H5P interactives within the unit to give you some practice. Scrolling down a little bit, so here's the different units. And then at the very end of the unit, you'll find that we have some shared activities. So for each of the units, we have an activity bank. If you've used activity banks before, these are inspired by Agora and DS106. And the activity bank is a space that you can go to. I'm just going to go there now. And you'll see for each of the different units, we've created activities that you can select from and complete. So here's an example of an activity. You can read about the activity and we'll get you to share just below it. And you'll see the shares from the previous group. Going back to the open access unit now. A moment here. Just again, so we have the activity bank. We also have a discussion for each month and the discussion description is on WordPress. However, when you click on it, I'm not going to now, what this is going to do is open Canvas up so that you can participate within the discussion. Finally, each unit has a shared reflection as well as a unit completion. So once again, this will open up Canvas and you can acknowledge your completion. Last thing to mention here is that each of the unit is going to be opening on the month will also be sharing program updates through this link. So that is the um, WordPress space. Now the other space we're using for POSE is a Canvas space. And the main goal of the Canvas space is to track your progress, help you track your progress, as well as we're doing discussions on there. So I'm just gonna open the Canvas space now by going to the open access discussion, we've hard linked all of the different Canvas components in. So if I click on discussion, this is gonna open the Canvas course. I could participate in the discussion now, but just to give you an idea of what to look for in this course. So again, Canvas is gonna be primarily used for tracking. We're also going to be sending announcements through Canvas. So these will be done monthly. They'll provide updates of the course. You'll be participating in monthly discussions within Canvas. We've also included a general discussion area and administrative discussion area. So if you get stuck in the course, if you have a question, feel free, share them up here. We check these quite regularly. 
Finally, to mention in the course, you'll find your grades. We've set up tracking for all of the different assignments in the course. This allows us to track your course progress, as well as for you to track your course progress. If you wanted to return to the POSE WordPress site, you can just click here. <coughs> A reminder, all of this is open and reusable after. I'm gonna stop sharing now and turn it over to the next person. And Excellent. I have a, I just let me grab one question from Helen. Um, is it possible to download the units as a PDF after the course is over or will the site remain up and accessible? Helen, we're, we will have a export using the WordPress export. So all of the contents is exportable. You could even pull it into Pressbooks or something if you wanted to PDF it from there. And we'll also have this open and accessible. All right, Christina. Great, thanks. I see there's some questions about logging into Canvas and I believe Rie has posted the self-enroll link. So uh, I, I think if you have other questions, um, we can uh, connect about that later. Great, okay. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm Christina Hendricks. I'm the academic director of the Center for Teaching, Learning and Technology and, and have been um, thinking and working in, in open, uh, particularly open education for quite some time now uh, and worked with uh, a number of folks here on the open education unit. But today I'm gonna be talking about just generally around open scholarship. Um, and, and some of this is on the getting started page, uh, or excuse me, module of the, the POSE course. And some of it is, is uh, additional to that. So um, open scholarship is, is kind of a broad term that's meant to include um, these areas that we've been talking about, open education, open access, open research, open data, open science. There's, there's quite a few opens that are connected to uh, scholarship. And that's, that's broadly what the word is. is um, an umbrella for, but we can dig into it a little bit more. Um, and I, I often try to think about what does open that like the word mean? Um, and it, it can mean quite a lot of things, right? If you think about uh, op an open door or open for business or an open mind, or like there's lots of things that open can mean. Um, in, in these particular discussions that we're doing here, um, it often means free of cost. And that's the image on the left. On the left, uh, there's an image of a bunch of books and a sign that says libros libres, libres. Sorry, my Spanish is terrible, which means free books. Um, <clears throat> and quite often when we talk about open in, in these contexts, we're thinking about things that don't cost money, though that's usually don't cost money to the end user, certainly costs money to create. Um, and uh, sometimes cost money to you know, make available as well. So that's one meaning of open. Um, on the right, I have a picture of people sitting in a museum and looking at, at uh, paintings on the wall. And, and a colleague of mine once um, told me about, like you could think of open like happens in a museum, which is you can access the materials and sometimes you can do it for free and sometimes you have to pay. Um, but you can't really do any adjustments to them, which makes sense for art, right? You don't want people to go in and, and deface the art or change the art necessarily. Um, although sometimes uh, artists don't mind that. Um, and sometimes it makes sense for, for research too, right? That uh, if you publish a paper, you don't necessarily want people to go in and change it and, and indicate that you uh, agree with those changes. So sometimes just being available to access without changing makes sense. But there are also other meanings of open that do involve uh, revision and change. So here's, here's several, like there's probably many other things you can think about, but here are some of the ways I think about openness in terms of um, these, these areas that Pose is talking about open scholarship. So free of cost um, to the end user. Uh, uh, if they have an internet access. <laughs> so that's also not necessarily fully free or uh, a low cost for a print version. Uh, open license. So you'll hear more about this um, early on in the course. Uh, we 
often talk about Creative Commons open licenses, which allow other people to reuse, depending on what kind of license you've chosen to revise, um, to use for commercial purposes or not. Um, so you'll learn all about that in, in the course. And, and the purpose of these licenses so that you don't have to ask permission. The permission is already granted to do these things. So you can think of open also in a technical sense. Um, so we'll talk about this uh, in, in part in the open research where uh, talking about open source software to use for open research. Um, so open formats to your, your software, the technical skills that might be needed to use or adapt the work, um, that uh, the, the more difficult it is to, to adapt or use, sort of you could think of it as that as less open. Sometimes we think of openness as transparency, so sharing the research data, sharing methods, um, or even sharing with students what data are collected about them and how that is used. So being open in terms of what we're actually doing. Sometimes we think of openness in terms of inclusivity. So various voices, topics, perspectives, methods, um, but also accessibility. So is the resource accessible for people with disabilities? Um, you might think about universal design for learning uh, in this context as well. And then finally on the slide, I have uh, social in the sense of social meaning of open, meaning that you're opening the work to collaboration from others. So um, more people involved uh, or involving community participation in your work. So this is just to say like there can be a lot of ways of thinking about openness. And you'll see a lot of these come up uh, throughout the course. Um, the, the overview of open scholarship that we have on the Getting Started module uh, is this, and I've highlighted a, a few words around some of the values underlying it. So why do open scholarship, not just what it is, but why we might do it. So thinking about democracy, equality, and social justice by opening up access, but also opening up um, in terms of who can contribute to knowledge and having uh, different kinds of knowledge and different approaches to knowledge um, be part of the uh, uh, sort of scholarship uh, of, of the, the globe. Um, and uh, here we've got uh, knowledge creation and dissemination should be understood as social practices, as I was mentioning before, with multiple people contributing, uh, focusing on connection and community, and inclusion, social impact, and participation. So it's not just about um, uh, creating knowledge, but also thinking about what impact that knowledge might have uh, for others. And then finally, the other thing we have on the POSE Getting Started website is um, a, a set of values of open scholarship. And I won't read through all of these, but you can see that some of them are about improving um, knowledge. So uh, we've got speed and efficiency in sharing research findings, which can help to uh, improve uh, scholarship or uh, openly sharing the results of research to enhance reproducibility and credibility in the results. And others are more kind of um, uh, values focused perhaps. So social justice commitment to reduce access barriers to information. Um, engaging the users of knowledge in the process of knowledge production so that we're, we're sort of reducing hierarchies so that it isn't just one group of people who produce the knowledge and other people learn or access it, but that there is more participation across multiple uh, folks. So I think, I mean, I'm, I've opened up a lot of questions and a lot of um, topics rather than closing them off, which I suppose is uh, typical of, of openness, but just to give you an overview of, of some of the themes that you'll see throughout the various modules in the course. So thank you very much. I'm not sure who is going next. Great. <laughs> thank, thank you, you Christina, for, for providing that, that overview of open scholarship. Um, we're going to now look at some of the, the specific areas in which we'll focus on and pose in the upcoming units and, and stuff. I'll, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Thanks, Will. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to give you an overview of the open access unit, which is the first unit in pose. 
Um, at the highest level, this unit is meant to introduce participants to some of the broader ideas and complexities at work within open scholarship along with the basic mechanics of how open access operates within the larger publishing ecosystem. Over the course of this unit, participants will have an opportunity to examine the current economics of publishing and the impact that the commercialization of publishing has had on academia, libraries, and systems of global research dissemination. Um, you'll have a chance to better understand author rights and intellectual property, particularly in relation to publisher agreements and negotiations, and finally, the unit will provide an overview of the development of open access um, and prevalent models of open access, including the challenges and opportunities that they afford. So here you can see the three modules that make up the open access unit, as well as the topics for each page within those modules. I won't go over the individual modules in too much detail as the content should speak for itself once you get into the unit but I'll briefly touch on the thinking behind the three modules that make up the unit. When we were designing the content that would go into the open access unit, we wanted to strike a balance between providing practical information, sort of the how-to of open access, and introducing participants to the challenges and complexities inherent in a deeper understanding of open access. Each module in the unit contains both this more practical knowledge, along with some of the um, opportunities for deeper engagement in the content. As you move through the content in the OA unit, you will notice that there are many opportunities to dig deeper into the topics presented. So while some of the other units in POSE um, also present its opportunities, there are many more in the OA unit. And this is a reflection of the fact that the OA unit is perhaps more ideas based uh, or ideas focused than the other units, which are more grounded in practice. As POSE on the whole was conceived of only as an introduction to open scholarship and not a comprehensive overview, the Dig Deeper readings provide participants with an opportunity to engage in the ideas being presented in a more meaningful way. So none of the Dig Deeper content is required reading, but I strongly encourage you to do some of the additional reading, especially if you are already familiar with the basics of open access. This Dig Deeper content is where you will be able to go beyond the introduction, introductory content, and into the more nuanced aspects of open access. Um, and one thing I'll add here too, is that last time we ran POSE, we had some feedback that maybe there was more reading than people expected or more work. And we have cut back overall in that, but maybe part of the reason is because people were trying to do all of the dig deeper readings. So I encourage you to do what interests you, to investigate what interests you, but to know that you don't need to do these dig deeper readings in order to have the information um, you need to do the, um, the other parts of the course, including the activities, for example. Finally, I just want to spend a moment on what we're referring to as sort of the big ideas. Um, and these are the ones that are presented in the OA unit. These three big ideas are each taken from one of the three OA modules and represent the larger questions we hope to address throughout the module content. The big ideas are structured as open-ended questions and leave room for each of you to come to your own conclusions, which we encourage you to explore through your engagement with the module content, but also through the activities, discussions, and reflections that accompany the modules. So a lot of the OA content is open-ended um, and there's no sort of easy answers to a lot of the complexities we raise. And we'll hope, we hope that through the course, you'll engage with this and it'll be productive for you. So I will pass it over now to Erin, I think. Thanks, Steph. So this next um, unit, uh, that will be open uh, in February will be open research. And open research is covering three areas, open workflows, open software, open data. So in this unit, we chose to really focus on these core areas of the open research ecosystem. And um, we're going to touch on transparency, reproducibility, open scholarship and open data. And similar to what Stephanie was talking about in terms of those 
big ideas. Really what we're trying to approach here is not, uh, there's a lot of intricacies that are involved in open research that we're not going to be able to get into. We're really introducing people to these core concepts and these big ideas of how can increasing transparency of research and project processes like methodology or workflow really improve research and help to advance knowledge? Uh, how can collaborative methods increase efficiency and also widen participation in research? And also thinking beyond like the cloud, just putting your information out there into the world and really thinking about making data open. So uh, in terms of the actual units, uh, we start off with open workflows. And really what we mean by open workflows is the steps we take to complete a task. And at its simplest, open workflow is when each of the steps of the research process is openly shared through clear documentation, which makes the research project more transparent, but also reproducible. And reproducibility is going to come up often throughout this, um, through open research. So you'll under have a clear understanding of what reproducibility um, means in the context of openness. So we're talking about clear documentation, which includes best practices around file naming conventions or project metadata. So information about your project or file formats. So in this section, you're really going to learn to articulate what an open workflow might mean in different disciplines because it does differ from sciences to say the arts. But we will also discuss the concepts of reproducibility and replica replicability, which are different, uh, and how they differ and appear in those different uh, disciplines. So next we're gonna talk about open software. The unit on open software is really gonna discuss considerations and pitfalls uh, when you consider working with particular software and particular code. Now you don't have to know code <laughs> in order to understand open software. And you don't even have to know all of the open softwares that we're mentioning, although we do describe quite a few and what they sort of do. But open source software is really what we're talking about is um, how it can support your work in being more sustainable by removing sort of that black box aspects that are inherent in proprietary software and lowering the barriers to reuse and reproduction. So when you use a software that is proprietary that people have to pay money for, we're automatically closing off a portion of our research because somebody can't uh, download the program freely and use use uh, the material that you've created. So this unit really is covering core concepts around creating open code that is meaningful, shareable, and reusable, and also why it's beneficial to do that. And finally, we're going to talk about open data. And data is a fundamental part of modern research workflows across disciplines. So open data, we're not necessarily just talking about, you know, the crunchy numbers. We're talking about any data outputs that have been created during the process of doing research. So as academic work, increasingly, we're making use of digital tools and methods. And this module is really covering the basic ideas of how to keep in mind to create, curate, and preserve sustainable data outputs and how this can support your work within a project, but also how others then can build upon that content and build upon that work, thus making research much more um, open and um, has more legs in terms of being able to be uh, used out in the world. So you will be learning about different types of principles around uh, open data. We will talk about FAIR principles um, and we'll also go through uh, the structural processes of ensuring that your data is open and the benefits of uh, making your data open. So now I'm going to pass it on to Lucas, who will talk about open education. Wonderful. Oh, thank, thank you, Erin. Um, so open education, we moved, put this unit last, um, partially because we assume that you will have explored this area the most in your open work. Um, so the open education unit is divided into three modules, Creative Commons, Open Educational Resources, OER, and Open Pedagogy. Uh, so for the Creative Commons, um, for the Creative Commons module, um, open education is often grounded in the application of Creative Commons licenses in teaching and learning materials. 
Creative Commons licenses, as Christina mentioned, are open copyright licenses that give permission for others to reuse the work under specific conditions. So we'll start off the module with an in-depth exploration of Creative Commons and how they relate to copyright. So a couple of the goals for you or areas that we'll touch on within this section, um, you'll be able to explain the differences between using work under fair dealing rules and using work under CC licenses. You'll be able to give an example of what one cannot, can and cannot do with the different types of licenses. So with your buy license, with your NC license, with your SC, SA licenses. Um, we'll point to some ways to find Creative Commons licenses in different contents types. And you'll have an opportunity to apply a Creative Commons license and share your work uh, in a format that's reusable for others. The next module we're going to look at is OER. And a good question to think about as you go through this module is what makes an educational resource open? So after we've explored Creative Commons licenses, we'll jump into OER. Open educational resources or teaching and learning resources, including full courses, course materials, textbooks, streaming video tests, software, and other tools, that are free of costs and access barriers, and which also carry legal permissions for open use. Generally, we use Creative Commons to grant this permission, which allows anyone to freely use, adapt, share the resources anytime, anywhere, depending on the licensing that, you, that you've given it. So in this unit, um, we will give examples of why learners and instructors value and use OER, We'll discuss some strategies for adapting and contextualizing learning materials. We'll identify and evaluate sources of open educational resources. And we, you will have an opportunity to develop and share an OER. And the final module that we're going to look at is open pedagogy. Open pedagogy asks not what you teach, but how you teach. Open pedagogy can involve a blend of strategies, technologies, and network communities to empower students to have control and agency over their own learning. This module focuses on how to incorporate principles of openness and learner participation into the process of teaching and learning. So a couple of topics that we're going to look at, we'll look at some different definitions of open pedagogy, some different pedagogical benefits and impacts to integrating open approaches into teaching and learning. We'll share some examples of different open assignments so that learners can have different agency when they complete an assignment. We'll talk about what rights and controls that students have over our own work, over their own work. And we'll also look at what are some of the challenges? What are we asking students or faculty to do when we ask them to work in the open? So a couple of different ways that we're going to look at open practice. And I'm going to turn over to Aaron now, who's going to introduce a breakout room activity. I did want to mention something with breakout rooms before we jump in. Um, they have been a nervous space for people lately. And we've, had, we've noticed that when we do breakout rooms, some people will disappear. I wanted to encourage you to stay. Community is one of the most important parts of this program. If you are uncomfortable when we do the breakout rooms, you may want to turn off your camera. Um, sometimes that can help you feel a little bit more comfortable. All right, over to you, Erin. Thanks, Lucas. All right, so as Lucas mentioned, we are going to do a bit of a participant breakout. Uh, in the breakout rooms, which we will set up, um, you will, we would like you to introduce yourself to um, the other uh, participants. And on the Padlet that Rie just shared uh, in the chat, we would like you to answer some of these questions, which is what has inspired you to participate in this program? What kind of open scholarship practices or projects interest you? And if you have a project or know of a project uh, that really interests you to maybe share a link to to that project. So, Will, if you wouldn't mind showing the Padlet. So it's going to look similar to the the map Padlet that uh, in terms of how you respond and comment. Uh, here we are. 
Um, so uh, at the top, we mentioned maybe it would be good for uh, one person to, to uh, be the kind of recorder inside of the Padlet, um, just so that we make sure that somebody is keeping kind of some notes of what is happening. Uh, so you might want to assign somebody that as well as when we come back after about 10 minutes, somebody who will be willing to maybe uh, just report out uh, some of that conversation that you had. So the three questions are, are listed here in the Padlet. There is the comment function that you could use to answer. You also could actually use the plus sign, the pink plus sign if you choose, but the comment function might be easy easiest to use uh, just so we keep track of the, the answers um, for the actual questions themselves. So if nobody has any questions, we're going to uh, assign the, um, the, uh, the breakout rooms and uh, we will come back. We will bring you back in about 10 minutes where we'll just do a bit of a debrief. So welcome back everyone. Um, I hope you had a interesting discussion and, and got to know each other a little bit. Uh, so uh, we have the Padlet open for all of the responses that, that folks gave. And I just wanted to give an opportunity if there's somebody in, um, in the session today, if you wanted to speak about your group, uh, what, what conversation might've come up, something something interesting, uh, feel free to maybe raise your hand so we could, could maybe see. Ah, so I believe I see Christopher, you have your hand raised. If you would like to unmute and maybe let us know. So unless there are any uh, questions, uh, any more questions, I would just say um, we're very excited to see you start interacting inside of Pose, looking forward to the discussions that we'll have and seeing you hopefully at our next sessions. Um, and welcome. And I really, um, really hope that this is a, a fruitful and, and interesting experience for everybody. So thank you for attending.